forget that. Jonathan, it is your time. God bless you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Dayan, it's an, it's an honor. <laughs> it's not a birth honor, but it's an honor to be with you guys. Uh, I imagine that you all printed the, the, the birth, uh, the birth uh, honor worksheet, and I, I hope you had that uh, worksheet in front of you. Please put your write your name in the in the in the paper, and as as I go through the presentation, you will be answering some of the the the, the questions or, or things you have to do in the requirements. So uh, this is the bird uh, honor, yes. and the first picture that you have here is a common kingfisher that it's uh, you can find it in in uh, in England. Just for you to know that. Um, the, the, the birds I'm going to be talking about are the birds that you can find in UK. Yes. I did not included birds from other parts of the world because this is a, a UK uh, moment, even though you, you, you are more than welcome to be with us, but the birds that you will be hearing about, they, they are in, you can find all of them in the UK. This honor, the bird's honor, it's a, an honor that uh, you need to know, it's part of the collection you need to have to, uh, to get a, a master award. So you, if you get this honor, you will be one step further to get the naturalist uh, master award or the zoology master award, just for you to know, okay? It's, it's, it's a component of these two uh, master awards uh, honors. So first requirement. The first requirement says give two characteristics which uh, set birds apart from all other creatures. And you have two empty blocks that you can write in inside, but do not write yet. Uh, I, I just want to share some, some interesting facts. All the vertebrates have a backbone, but birds have a number of unique characteristics such as, and I'm gonna mention to you 10, but do not write any of these 10, okay? The first one, they can fly. It. I mean, we, I think we all know that uh, <laughs> is one of the characteristics that the birds, they can fly. Then another one, they, they, they put hard-shelled eggs. Uh, and then another one, the, the blood is, is warm, is not cold, like the snakes and other animals, okay? Number four, covered with feathers. Eh? It's not like us, that we have hair, they have feathers, they have hollow bones. Number six, the, they have a, a bone structure, and it's very interesting, the bone structure in the eye. Number seven, they have a keen eyesight, and there's some references also in, in the Bible about it, and they have musical voices. Uh, some of you probably will love to wake up in the morning at 5 a.m. Uh, listening to the birds singing. Some of you probably don't like that, but they have uh, musical voices, even at 5 a.m. The number nine, ability to sense magnetic fields. And number 10, they are very colorful. These are, these are characteristics that you can find in birds, but those characters, not all of them, they are quite unique because you, you have a fish that can fly. You have flying fish. You have gliding snakes. You have, you have gliding frogs. You have also gliding squirrels and you have also bats. They can fly. They're not birds. You have mammals that are warm blooded, so that is not unique to birds. Whales, frogs, and some other of the, the primates, uh, primates uh, they have very musical voices. Many of the mammals, such as uh, meerkats, have good eyesight. Uh, it helps them to, to, to see far away you know, the predators. So this is not unique, and most fish have the ability to sense electromagnetic fields. It's not a unique characteristic of, uh, of birds. Also some, some fish can, can have that characteristic. So let's see a couple of short videos so you can see that other animals, they can glide and it's similar to, to fly. When you've got fur instead of feathers, going airborne takes some guts. But the flying squirrel never hesitates to leap into the void. Luckily, he comes equipped with a built-in parachute.
A membrane stretches from wrist to ankle, turning the squirrel into a living, breathing paper airplane. With each leap, the squirrel takes aim and spreads its body into a square. A cartilage rod attached to their wrists helps them steer during flight. The rodents glide through the forest like ghosts, their tails acting as a stabilizer and a brake. They may look like daredevils, but flying squirrels have plenty to be scared of. Snakes, elves, raccoons, and even cats constantly hunt them. But no matter what, this squirrel will always have an escape plan. Gliding is like a built-in life insurance policy. Wingless predators need not apply. Another example of animals that they can glide, and I, I never imagined that a frog could do it, but I found it. Uh, frogs, there's, there's some kind of frogs that they also glide. Look at this. Male gliding leaf frogs leap from the treetops. To slow their descent, they use their huge webbed feet as parachutes. So, we've seen that other animals can do the same things that uh, some of do those uh, specific or special or nice characteristics that you can find in birds, but there are four things, four things that are unique, uh, unique to birds, and, and you need to choose Two of them, the, the, the two that you like the most for the requirements, okay? So the first requirement, you can write down two of these four unique things that I'm going to show you. The first one, they all lay hard shell eggs, all of them, uh, which they incubate using their body temperature. Number two, they all are covered with a feather structure that differs greatly from scales and fur. Number three, hollow bones allow them to fly almost effortlessly. They, they, they weigh almost nothing, I mean. And number four, a ring bone, and this is a very specific one for birds, a ring bone in the eyes of birds is what allows them to focus so well and have such a keen eyesight. So you can uh, write this down and put uh, two of these uh, unique things that only birds have in, uh, in the first requirement. And now we're going to the second requirement. And the second is name three flightless birds and tell what their diet consists of and name the country or continent in which each one lives. And as you can see in your, in your honor worksheet, uh, you have a, a space for the bird name, another space for the diet, and another space for the continent and country. So as you look at the, 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 the birds, I'm gonna flightless birds that I'm going to show you, you can choose three of them and write them down in, in your paper. So let's go with the first one. This comes from New, New Guinea and Australia, and the name is the Southern Kasowari. Uh, for, forgive my English, I'm, I'm not, that's not my first language, I hope. Some of the names that I will be sharing with you, you don't laugh too much because some of them, I can tell you, they're extremely difficult to pronounce in English. Hey, Jonathan, as yeah. you just mentioned Australia, I would just like to uh, 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 bring you the greetings from uh, Pastor, um, Pastor uh, Gilbert Kanji, who said it is so, oh. good, it is so good to hear Jonathan uh, speak oh, again. So, so there's a greetings from Australia as you're talking about Australian birds. <laughs> 
if, uh, if Gilbert is listening, I mean, a big, a big hug for my, my good friend Gilbert. I mean, I, I, I miss him so much. Okay, let, let's continue. Southern cassowary, that's from New Guinea and Australia, the diet. Um, this bird prefers fallen fruit, but will eat small vertebrates, invertebrates, fungi, and carrion, and plants. And, and it's a beautiful, uh, colorful, well, beautiful. It depends how we define beauty, okay, in some of those birds. Now, another one, a flightless, another flightless uh, bird is the emu from Australia, diet. Emus eat a simple diet of fruits, seeds, growing shoots of plants and insects. They swallow small stones which stay in the gizzard and help grind up food. They require a large amount of water and they drink nine to 18 liters daily. That's why there's desert in Australia. So let's go to the third one, <clears throat> the kiwi. This is one of the, the most beautiful kind of weird birds that you can find. It's the favorite of one of my daughters and it's from New Zealand. The kiwi, that's why New Zealand's they are called kiwi because this is the bird from that country. Kiwi eats small invertebrates, seeds, grubs, and many varieties of worms. They also may eat fruit, small crayfish, eels, and amphibians. Now we have another one, and this uh, for the people that is coming from, uh, the, the people coming from, uh, from Africa. I, I've seen many, many times the ostriches in the, in the uh, Africa savannas. The diet, <clears throat> their diet consists mainly on, of uh, roots, leaves, seeds, uh, but ostriches will eat whatever is available, so don't get close to them. Sometimes they consume insects, snakes, lizards, and rodents. They also swallow sand and pebbles, pebbles which help them green uh, up their food in the, uh, the same as, as the emu, okay? Next one, we have the beautiful penguin. You can find penguins in all the southern hemisphere. I went to Australia, I've been in South Africa, and I've seen penguins in South Africa, beautiful ones in Australia, beautiful ones. The, the, the southern hemisphere, you can find penguins. Diet, penguins eat seafood. Their main diet is fish, though they'll also eat squid, small uh, shrimp-like uh, animals called krill uh, and uh, crustaceans, okay? Penguins, they don't fly neither. Then th this is a, a, an animal, a bird coming from South America, mainly Brazil. You find it mainly in Brazil, the rea. Uh, the diet, uh, they enjoy plants, fruits, seeds, but also insects, lizards, birds, and other small game. Uh, reas uh, have a taste for agricultural crops, which turns them the, the ire of many South American farmers. They chase them, okay? They chase them. And two very exceptional birds, flightless, flightless birds. They are extinct, but they existed. Uh, the great oak uh, is extinct. Uh, the diet is favorite prey were fish, including Atlantic uh, Manhattan and capelin and crustaceans. And the other one is, is a beautiful bird called Mauritius dodo. And if um, Gilbert is listening, he knows Mauritius very well. So Mauritius dodo. Is extinct. The diet, uh, in addition to fallen fruits, the dodo probably subsisted on nuts, seeds, bulbs, and roots. I've been in Mauritius, and I, I've seen the, this this in in some postcards. You know this bird, the image of this bird is very well known there in, in Mauritius. But it's extinct. Uh, we we don't we cannot find those two uh, anymore. But I wanted to share this information with you. Let's take a look at uh, this beautiful kiwi. The way the kiwi eats, and, and you can see it's a bird, but you, you don't even you don't you don't even see the wings. So it's 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 an impressive animal. Impressive, impressive, impressive animal. And it's a little, a little video. Uh, why, why, why they got extinct? Uh, many flightless birds have become extinct. Many, many. These are these two are not the only ones. Uh, there are other birds that uh, they have become extinct because of us. Uh, what uh, human human beings are doing. As you can, uh, I think you saw in the news uh, or you read in the in the newspapers or even in, in your computers. Uh, 
uh, that in many places where the, the civilization got enclosed in, in their own apartments or houses, many animals came out. Uh, they, they show up again. In, in, uh, in Florence, they, they saw many, many dolphins for the first time in many, many, many years. Also, in, uh, where my, my parents live in Spain, in Puerto de Sagunto, uh, they, they saw a big, big group of dolphins, you know, very near the coast. So the, the, the animals suffer very much our presence because we, don't, we do not respect them. So this is one of the things that you guys, you need to remember. Eh? Uh, one of the most important things in this, in this honor is that you need to respect nature and you need to respect uh, animals. Requirement number three. I hope you already wrote down the, the name of the three birds, diet, and where they are coming from. Okay, now we're going to the number three. Um, there's two sections in number three. Give the day of the week when birds were created, and the other section is find in the Bible the names of five birds and be able to name them from memory. So, let's read. We're going to read the, the, the verses. We can find them in Genesis 1, 23. And, uh, and then you will write down the day of, uh, of the week when birds were created. Okay, I'm going to read this Bible verse for you. Then God said, let the waters abound with an abundance of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the face of the firmament of the heavens. So God created great sea creatures and every living thing that moves with which the waters abounded according to their kind and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let the birds multiply on the earth. So the evening and the morning were the fifth day. So you can write in, 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 in the paper uh, the day of the week in which the birds were created. And this is the second section, okay? The second section of the, of the third requirement. Find in the Bible the names of five birds and be able to name them from memory. Now, I'm going to show you, and you have to name them. I'm not going to put the name. Uh, you need to name five. I'm giving you more than five, but you need to name five. And I'm going to give you also the Bible verses where you can find them. In case you don't remember the name, you write down very quick because I'm not going to stop. We don't have a lot of time. Uh, you write down the, the, the Bible verses, and then you look for those Bible verses uh, a little later. Okay, so... Name this bird if you can, and you can find the name of this bird in the, in the book of Psalms, chapter 102, verse number six. Now we have, I think everybody knows these ones. They're everywhere. And there's many places in the Bible where you can find them. Genesis, Leviticus, in the book of Job, uh, in, uh, in Ezekiel, you can find the name of these. They can name them in, in two different ways. They have two, you can name them in two different ways, but both of them are correct, okay? This is one of my favorites. I love, I love this one. Uh, and you can find the name of this, this bird in, in Leviticus, in Psalms, and some other places. But I put only these two, these two Bible verses, okay? Let's see some more uh, that you can find, some more birds that you can find in the Bible, okay? You have to name them. You need to name five of them. I already gave you three. Here comes another one. You can find the name of this one. In Deuteronomy 14.13, this one, this beautiful one, you can, you can find it in, in different uh, books of the Bible, Genesis, Leviticus, and also Ezekiel. Uh, you can write down the Bible verses and you can look for them uh, a little later. And then you have this one. We talked about this one before. It's one of the flightless birds. And you can find the name of this one in the book of Leviticus. Uh, in Job two times in that book, and then in Lamentations, uh, you can find the name of this, of this bird. So name it, okay? Next slide, you're gonna have again a group of birds. I'm not gonna tell you the name of these ones. This is one of the most difficult birds to name, but you can find the name, not only Matthew, because I, I chose the female, but if you look at the name of the male, there are many, many, many different uh, Bible verse, you can find that name too. This one, <clears throat> you can find also in Genesis, Leviticus, Ezekiel, Matthew, uh, name it. To explain or to represent sometimes something, okay? 
the name of this of this bird. This is one of my favorite animals. Uh, actually, when we talk about flying animals, the the, the bald eagle. This eagle. Uh, I'm sorry, I said the name, but I imagine everybody knows. Uh, it's it's a, an impressive one. It's an impressive Exodus, Leviticus, uh, Joe Proverbs, Isaiah. Uh, you find this, and, and actually the last um, uh, Bible verse that uh, is written under this uh, uh, picture, Isaiah 40, 31, is one of my favorite Bible verses in the Bible. So another section of name it, the last three. Okay, you can find these beautiful birds uh, in Psalms and, and in the book of Psalms and also in the book of Isaiah. You have to name it. Uh, and this one is very well known and it represents something extremely beautiful uh, when it comes to, to the Trinity. It has been used to represent not only peace, but we all understand, but also uh, during Jesus' baptism represented the Holy Spirit. So uh, you can find it in, in the book of Genesis, Ezekiel, Isaiah, and the book of, of John. And also this one is a, is a very nice one. <laughs> And you can find the name of this bird in the book of Isaiah 38, verse 14. Okay, so this is uh, all for the requirement number three, the section in the requirement number three. We're going to the number four. You write or give orally three ways in which God's love and purpose is shown in the creation of birds. Okay, I'm going to ask you to write, not to give orally, because we cannot do that right now. But I'm going to ask you to write. I'm going to give you four and you're gonna choose three of them, okay? The first one, and I'm gonna go a little fast because we still have a, a, a lot of things to see. God created the birds to point to himself as the provider of all that we need. If he takes care of the birds, he shall surely take care of our needs. And you can find a Bible verse that references that. It's in Luke 12, 24. Another, another uh, way in we can see, in which we can see. Again, you can see in the last uh, line, uh, Isaiah 40, 31 is one of my favorite Bible verse, verses in the Bible. Birds teach us about God. Birds, they teach us about God. Number three, the adaptations of birds is, is impressive. The, the beaks, their legs, the, the feet, and we will see some specifications a little later. We won't go in detail because you have an advance uh, honor for this. But uh, it's extremely beautiful to see how, even though they are all uh, flying creatures, they are extremely uh, different from one another. Uh, the colorful diversity show us God's creative power. This, I mean, I've been in, in Costa Rica, I've been in Colombia, in, in, in South Africa, I'm telling you, I, I've seen birds that just the colors, uh, I mean, you could look at them for hours. They're extremely beautiful. And that show us God's creative uh, power. And number four, we ought to trust God totally, just as birds do. And you have Matthew 6, 26. Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father fits them. Are you not of more value than they? So we need to trust uh, completely uh, God. So these are four things that I'm, I'm, I'm giving you uh, for this requirement. So you only need to, to write down three. I gave you four, so you choose three of them, okay? <clears throat> now, requirement number five. And this is a little bit uh, tricky because I'm gonna show you a lot of birds. I'm, I'm gonna try to go, um, not, not extremely fast, but I'm gonna go uh, quite, quite uh, quick because uh, I think it's close to 50 birds that I'm gonna show you. Write down, write down the ones that you are positive you've already seen. Do not write 30 birds because you saw them on this presentation. The beauty of birds, it's in nature. Uh, but I understand, you know, we're in, under, under this uh, enclosement, you know, coronavirus and it's complicated. The ones that you are positive, you have seen them already, write them down in your list. You don't have the 30, just uh, spend a little bit of time when the government allows you to live and try to find the rest. But I'm going to show you some, some of those birds. You need to, to identify, let me go back, because you need to choose 30 birds, but you have to come at this from different orders. And I'm going to give you the, the, the name of the order, and then I will include birds from each one of those orders. 
So I have uh, some, I'm not gonna explain everything. You will be able to get this. If uh, Dayan, I will share this with, uh, with Dayan, with Pastor Dayan. And you can see the order in the left side of your screen. And you have the name of the order and you have the characteristic of each one of the orders. Uh, and then you have how many uh, different types of birds you can find of that order in the UK. So from the Anseri forms, you can find 62 in, in, in UK. The Gali forms, you can find 10 in UK. Procellary forms, you can find 18 in the UK. All of them, they have different characteristics. They do things differently. The pelicani forms, they have 17 different ones in the UK. You, you look at the asipitry forms and you have 27 different ones in the UK. Grui forms, um, the crane-like, the meaning of uh, grui form mean, means like a crane-like. So these are more or less the, 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 the birds that they look like cranes, okay? So you have 16 different ones in the, in the UK. The caradri forms, I don't know, you will say that way in, in English. I hope you will understand. You have approximately 135. It's very difficult to come up with the exact number because it's, it's extremely big, this, this diverse. Um, the next one, passeri forms. This is very interesting because you have 247 in UK but includes this order of birds includes more than half of all bird species. So half of the birds that we have in the entire world, they come under this order, passeriforms. forms. Then you have the falconi forms. They are, they are, um, uh, you can see here the, the falconet, uh, the, the girl falcon. The, you have different kind of falcons, okay? You have 10 different ones in UK. Striggy forms, you have nine different ones in UK, and Columbi forms, I imagine you know where those are doves, um, pigeons, and you have seven different ones in the UK. And now we're gonna go order by order. I'm gonna show you in each one of the orders, with the exception of the passeri forms, I will show only one slide. But the passeri forms that are half of the bird species in the world, I will show you two slides of those. So we go with the Anseri forms, and these are the four uh, different birds that I want to show you. You will see four in each one of the slides. If you have seen the, the, the swan, you can write it down, okay? So this is the swan, the mute swan. It's very nice, it's different than the, the other, other swan because it has, in, uh, on top of the peak is black. Well, I'm not gonna get into detail with all of them because it's, it's uh, we only have 20 more minutes and we still have a lot, a lot to do. So the great lag goose, this kind of goose, uh, I've seen hundreds of, of them. I wrote down if, if you can find them in the UK, UK and uh, some of them, they are winter visitors. Some of them, they, they, they live there already. But uh, in, in some parts, some, some of them are summer visitors, some of them are winter visitors. You can see them during summer or during winter. Then the common uh, shell duck, this is beautiful, it's very beautiful. And then this one, if you haven't seen this one, then you, you, you have been living in your, in your room your entire life because these, these two are everywhere. The mallard is, is everywhere, this kind of, of, of duck. So these are the, the four I'm gonna show you from this order, the Anseri forms. So if you have seen any of these, write it down in the, in the, the list of 30 that I, I gave you. The galliforms, the four that are, we're gonna see, red grouse, uh, this is, is a nice one. Then you have, this is better known, the red-legged partridge, uh, this is resident, it, it lives in the, in the UK, so you will be able to see it. They're not that easy to see these ones, eh, because they're very scary. And uh, the black grouse, is very difficult to see this one too. And the western capercaillie, uh, these are reintroduced population. Uh, they, they did not have them before and, and now they have it in, in UK. We're going to the next order. Remember, you have to choose five orders. I, I, I'm, I, I'm giving you more than five. And you need to choose uh, 30 birds that, have, that, are, that belong already to five different orders. Procellariforms. 
the European Storm Petrel. This is uh, a very well known. I mean, at least uh, it's almost all over Europe, not only in the in the UK, but all over all over Europe. Then the great uh, sheer water. Uh, you you live in an island, most of you, if you are in the UK, and, and you go near the, the the coastline, and you will see these these animals uh, I mean, everywhere. Uh, the northern fulmar, the beautiful one, and then you have the black broad albatros. The albatros is a, is a beautiful, beautiful bird. I haven't seen this one in nature, but I wanted to, to include it in, in here. Now the pelicaniforms, these ones, I'm positive some of them, you, you have seen them already. Pelicaniform, you have the Dalmatian, the pelican, the normal pelican, the Dalmatian pelican is a big, big, big bird. Then you have the great bittern that you will never think that they belong to this order, but yes, the great bittern, this is a small one. The cattle uh, egret, and these, you can see them as you drive and you can see them in the, in the field. And also this one, the great uh, egret, uh, we have them also here in, uh, in Switzerland. You can, you can see those, those two, the pele, pelecaniforms. Next order, we have the achipitriforms. And these are, we're starting already with the, with the birds of prey, okay? Red kite, we have a lot of these near where I live. Uh, sometimes when I go for, for, for a walk, I can see this red kite. It's not only in the UK, you can, you can see this one uh, almost all over Europe. Not, not everywhere, but the central to North Europe, the red kite. Now the white-tailed eagle. This is a, a very nice one. I haven't seen it in, in nature, but it's, it's a very nice one. You have the golden eagle. I, I've seen this one many times. In fact, I had one in my arm. Uh, it was in a zoo, of course, not in nature. Uh, but it's, it's extremely big and heavy. It's, it's, it's a beautiful animal. And then the next one, the osprey. Let me tell you, remember the name of this one. I'm going to say it again. Remember the name of this one, osprey, okay? Osprey, you need to remember this one, osprey, because we will come back to this one a little later in this presentation. Gruiforms. The water rail, this is a common one. You can find it, it's, it's a resident and, and in, in the UK. Uh, this is a beautiful one also, the common Moorham. Uh, you, can, you can also see it's a, it's a resident over there, the uh, Eurasian could in every single lake where you can find also humans. Here in the lakes in, in Switzerland, you, you find this one everywhere. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's full of these of this, uh, ducks. Common crane, you can find these ones too very easily. Uh, it's, a, it's resident and, uh, uh, and also uh, pass by, okay, in UK. Karadri forms, Eurasian oyster catcher. So this is the one that eats things that should, we should not eat. Okay, Eurasian oyster catcher. is resident and also breeding species in, in the UK. You have the peat. Avocet or avocet uh, is resident also. The, the, the peak, the beak is 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 extremely nice. Uh, the ring plover uh, also a nice one, and you can you can um, uh, recognize it because of the ring that has in the neck, and also the yellow ring that has in the in the eye. It's beautiful, and it looks like the sorrow. Okay, it has an antifaz and northern lapwing. Um, the crest is nice, it's beautiful, and it's also resident in the, in the UK. Remember, you need to be writing down the names of the birds that you have already seen, okay? Now, we're coming to the big, 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 big family. These are the passeriforms. Red-billed toe uh, is resident, and it's, it's uh, like a crow, but uh, with, the, with the red beak, so... It's, it's a very nice animal. This is the Eurasian jay. I remember in the US when I was living there, the blue jay, it was a very impressive bird. Well, this is, is very close to that one. It is the Eurasian jay. Gold crest, you can see them flying and in the, in the little bushes, uh, eating uh, little seeds everywhere. They are very nice and very easy to, to see, the gold crest and the Euro-Asian Skylark. I haven't seen this one in, in nature. 
uh, but just the red build and the gold crest. The second slide of the same order, passeriforms. You have the Asian blue teeth, it's very nice. Uh, and you can, you can see them uh, kind of easy if you walk a little bit uh, in the woods, you will see them. The great uh, gray shrike, uh, remember this bird too. You need to remember this one, okay? It's a visitor in winter in the UK. This one, I imagine you all have seen this one, the Eurasian magpie, it's, uh, it's everywhere. Uh, everywhere in Europe, I think everywhere in the world, you can find this, this kind of bird. And what about this one? The raven, okay? You, this, this is a, a bird that you can, you can see everywhere. And you can find the name also in the Bible in different situations, the common raven. Let's go to the falconiforms, and you see another four. This is the common kestrel. It's a small one, but uh, it's, it's a beautiful animal. Then you have the merlin. It's a very nice one. Remember, we're going to come back to this one, to, to the merlin. And, um, and then you have the your Asian hobby. Uh, also, a small. these are small uh, prey uh, birds, okay? Small prey birds. And the peregrine falcon. I've seen many of these. Uh, it's a very, very nice one. We have them in Spain. You can find them almost all over Europe, the peregrine falcon, halcón peregrino in, in Spanish, okay? Streaky forms. Streaky forms, this is a, a I, I like uh, owls a lot. Uh, I had one of those barn owls uh, in my hand in South Africa as I was visiting a nursery camp for, for birds and animals. And I, I had the possibility to touch one barn owl. It was beautiful. Uh, he was suffering because uh, people, people heard, you know, the, the barn owl and they were taking care of uh, this animal over there. But it's a beautiful creature. Uh, then you have the little owl. Uh, this is a very small one. Uh, it's, it's, not, it's not that easy to see. This is tawny owl. Uh, they are near barns. Uh, you, you can see this animal. And then the short-eared owl. I saw this one also in, um, in, in Italy once, okay, the short-eared uh, owl. So you have four different owls that, from this uh, order that is a streaky forms. And then the next one, Columbia forms. We have the morning dove. Everybody has seen the morning dove, guys, and I imagine, and, and, and even the sound. We're gonna come back to this one too, but the sound of these animals are very, very, very familiar. And then the color dove, you can see it's like a, it's wearing a collar. Uh, it's very nice, uh, the family of the dove. And this, the rock pigeon or feral pigeon is the most well known and is everywhere. Even is, is, is one of these uh, birds that are destroying uh, the, the monuments because they, they, they gather in, in big, big, big numbers. And then they, they drop uh, their feces and, and they, they destroy the monuments. So. Uh, civilization is trying to, to put them away, but the, there's no way to put them away. They're everywhere. Rock pigeon or feral pigeon is a resident, almost everywhere. And then the turtle dove is a beautiful one too. I've seen all of these ones. And I imagine if you don't have seen all of them, at least two or three of these, uh, I'm positive you've, you've seen them. So those were the, the, the requirement number five. And we're going now to the requirement number six. And you need to make a list of five species of wild birds that you personally have positively identified by sound. So now guys, I'm gonna ask you to be very attentive because you need to be listening. I am going to show you five birds and I'm gonna show you the sound, how they sound, each one of the birds. And then after you see those five birds, I will do one thing. I will put a sound, and you need to match it with the name of the bird, okay? So the first step is, I'm gonna put you five birds and how each one of them sound. So the first one is the mallard. The mallard, you all have seen this bird. So now everybody quiet. If there's somebody with you in the room, everybody should be quiet and listen to the sound and remember it. You need to remember it and memorize it, okay? This is the mallard. Okay, 
We're going to listen to another another bird, okay? We have listened to the mallard. The second one we're gonna listen to is the merlin. Remember, memorize the sound, okay? Everybody in silence, okay? The merlin sounds like this. Okay, this was the Merlin. So we have listened to the Mallard, we have listened to the Merlin. Now we're going to the Barn Owl. Be careful with this one. It's not a nice noise, but anyway, uh, try to memorize it. Okay, this was the barn owl. Okay, I hope you will remember this one. Now we're going to listen to the common raven. Okay, remember the sound of the raven. I think everybody knows this sound. Okay, I think this was easy. And we're gonna uh, listen to the last one. The last one is the colored dove. Okay, we're, we have the sound of one of the doves. This is the color dove. So listen to the sound and memorize it. Okay, now it's time to go to the to the worksheet and. I will put the sound and you need to write down now in the requirements to which bird of those that are written here it belongs. So number one, you see in, in your worksheet, you have number one, you need to write, write down the name of the bird, okay? O of the sound that you're gonna listen right now. So listen carefully and chose the name and choose the name of the bird. Okay, let's go to the next sound. Let's go to the next sound. Number two, listen it carefully and which bird belongs to. Okay, let's go to the next one. Listen to the sound and write down the name of the bird in number three that belongs to. Okay, let's go to the next one, number four. And you need to write down in the paper the anima, the bird, the sound belongs to. This one I think is clear. And let's hear the last one. I mean, if you had all the other ones right, you know the, the sound for this one. So let's listen. Okay, 
I hope you got them right. And we're going to the last requirement and we have just a few minutes. Um, I chose for you just one of the things. Usually the requirement is you choose uh, among four different things. I chose just one because you will be able to do it today. Um, find a bird nest, identify the species of the bird that built it, describe the nest in detail, observe the nest for five days. You don't need to do those five days. Uh, 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 just because we're in confinement and it's a, a difficult moment we're living in, then uh, if you pay attention to what you have, go, you're going to see on the screen, you will be able to do this requirement. Probably the only one that you won't be able to finish is number five, okay? That you will be able to finish it if you go to the, to the nature. Number seven. So these are eight different uh, bird nest type. Um, you have cup nests, uh, nests, uh, scrape nests, uh, burrow nests, cavity nest, platform nests, pendant nest, and sphere nest, and mound nests. And I've chosen uh, to, uh, to talk about four of them only. And from those four of them, at the end of the presentation, I will show you the picture of the nest that I showed you in those four, in one of those four. So be be very attentive because you will have to tell the name of the bird nest and also to give some explanation about that nest, okay? The, the type of nest it is and also how it's done and a little bit of description of that, of that nest. So let's go with it. And the first uh, two that I want to share with you, the first one is uh, the type of nest is cup. And this bird that you can see, here's one of the birds that I showed you before, and is the great gray shrike nest. Uh, and how is it done? I mean, it's the cup nest, and it's a simple cup-shaped nest. It's the most familiar common nest that you can find it almost everywhere. And the overall size, dimension, and depth of the cup may differ, and some birds build distinct inner and outer cup layers made out of little pieces of grass, sometimes some feathers. That's the way it's built. Um, so this is the, the cup type of nest, okay? And the bird name that belongs to it, this type of nest is the great gray strike nest. Second one, the osprey, okay? The type of nest is the platform nest, is the platform nest. And the name of the bird that built, even the bird that is on top of that nest is the osprey. Uh, it's, a, a, it's relatively large, it's re relatively large. Uh, it's bulky structure, often built of larger twigs or sticks, and the surface is typically flat or may have a very uh, shallow depression. Uh, it's, it's a very difficult to, to, to get to. You only can get to that one flying usually. Uh, but the cup nest, you can, if you uh, go up in the, in the trees, you can, you can see those types of nests very easily. It's a very nice one also, the, the platform and, and the, the bird I'm showing here and the nest that I'm showing is, belongs to the osprey, osprey. Ne let's go to the next two um, type of nets. This is cavity, the cavity, and, and I'm showing you the barn owl. The cavity nesting birds are common and will either X cavate their nesting cavities or use natural cavities in trees, snacks, or cacti. Um, I don't know if probably you say cacti, but anyway, the barn owl is one of those animals that use uh, or the type of nest they live in is the cavity, cavity nest. And the fourth one, you need to remember one of those, those four that I'm showing you, okay? This is the mound nest. And the, the swan, it, 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 put the nest uh, like this in a mount type. A mount nest is built on the ground, but it's a relatively large accumulation of nesting material in a tall cone or bell-shaped structure. And this is the mount, the mount type of nest. I'm gonna show you again the two previous ones. Okay, so you have the cup with the great uh, gray shrek nest. You have the platform. With the osprey, you have the cavity, that is the barn owl, and then you have the mound, that is the newt swan. Okay, there's other four, but we are out of time. 
So I just want to look at it, scrape, burrow, pendant and sphere or dome. These are the other four designs, but uh, just the last slide that I want to share with you, you need to give your answers in the requirement number seven. You need to identify the species of bird that build the nest that you're gonna see on the screen. And then not only the bird, uh, but also describe the nest. So first, identify the name of the bird that built this nest. And you can write it down. You have a space in the, in the worksheet where you can write the name of this bird. And then you have to describe the nest in detail. So you have um, maybe 30 seconds. Uh, and then I'll be done with the presentation, Pastor Dayan. Uh, yeah. I think right in time. I, I didn't take well, you did too very long. well, Jonathan. You need to know that uh, everybody listen very carefully. All of you said many are writing down the feeling very positive about achieving the Pathfinder honor today. Uh, That's very good. Class. So this is the presentation. I want to show you again the the the, the common kingfisher. But uh, this is the presentation today. I hope you 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 will enjoy it, and not only enjoy it, but also uh, if you can get closer to to nature and closer to Jesus with this uh, honor. Amen. John, a big thank you for that. Uh, let us all put our hands together and let's give a big clap to Jonathan uh, oh, for this. There's an thank you so much for that. Thank you guys. Thank you. 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 Thank you.